We also got another uh, conversation here with um, Monique. This one now features um, where she's talking about Tyler Perry. This is fucking interesting because I feel like the Tyler Perry thing is even worse than the Kevin Hart thing because Kevin Hart <laughs> at least did he did offer some help and then later on he kind of like changed his mind. But I feel like with the Tyler Perry <laughs> stuff, I feel like he was he was on he wanted to snake Monique from minute zero. Do you know what I mean? That's what he wanted to do. He wanted to snake her from minute zero. So let me let me play this for you. This clip of flipping Monique talking about Tyler Perry because it's, in my opinion, I think it's absolutely hilarious because <laughs> she ended up kind of snaking him back in a way, but it's a funny little story. So let me get this up for you now. This is Monique on Club Shay Shay talking about her relationship with Tyler Perry. Let's see what you think about this. Now to Tyler Perry's credit, Tyler Perry called us up, right? And he said, I can see the pain in you and I can hear it. And I want to let you know that I, I, I would never do nothing to hurt you. But the conversation kept going on. Only for Tyler Perry to admit he did start a rumor that I was difficult to work with. He lied. Only for Tyler Perry to admit I was wrong. And when my movie Boo come out, I'm going to say that. Right? Now, here's where... When you did that interview with Kat, I could respect how you do it. Because Kat said, you let them people lie in your face. And your response was, Kat, I don't know if they're lying or not. Right. Because I can only take them at their word. At their word. Right? Yes. Well, we sent you the audio mm -hmm. of Tyler Perry. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to take me at my word. I want you to hear his word. And what did you hear that man saying? What did you hear that man saying? He said it. What did he say? Is that is Moni, you know you're not supposed to be recording people. N no, no. No, no. Let me back up. Okay. Everything we did was legal. And here's where a black woman really gets the kick in the ass. Had I not recorded Tyler Perry, then it would have been my word, word against, his. against his. And then on top of that, it would have been, he's so powerful, we can't even pay no attention to that. Right. Well, now I have him on audio, which is legal to do mm -hmm. where we live. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. We have him on audio. And do you know what some people then said? Why would you record him? <laughs> Just like you sat there and said, you know what's illegal to do. But did you hear what the man said? I, I violated you. Yeah. I mistreated you. Yeah. Do you know, Shannon, that's cost my family tens of millions of dollars? Yeah. Over a lie and a rumor? Is he gonna is he gonna make a he's gonna compensate you for that? I want you to look in your camera. Mm. Yes. And I want you to talk to Tyler Perry mm. because you heard what that man said. Mm. So ask him, will he compensate my family for that? Tyler, will you come on Club Shay Shay and let's have a conversation about the fair compensation? for what transpired between you and Monique, you can sit right here and she's sitting right here and you and I can have a conversation. And we'll do you one better. And give me five on that, baby. <laughs> we'll do you one better, Shay. My husband and I'll sit right next to him. See, with this whole situation and some of the people that Kat talked about, ironically, I have this issues with those same people. There were people that reached out to Tyler Perry on my behalf. Okay. And I was grateful for that. Okay? There was Al Sharpton, the Reverend Al Sharpton, civil rights leader. Yeah. I sent him that audio. He listened to it. He said, baby, what that man did to you was wrong, and you're like my daughter, and we're going to have to get him to fix that. Right. <clears throat> we didn't hear from Al Sharpton for six months. <laughs> the next time we saw Al Sharpton, he was on a podium talking about we don't need to fly commercial because we can fly <laughs> Tyler Perry's private jet. <laughs> I said, that's why I'm not hearing back from him. Okay? <laughs> then we had our beautiful sister, Stephanie Mills. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> Who is, she don't play. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. I told her what happened, sent her the audio. Now, I don't know if she listened to that audio or not. But however, she called Tyler Perry. She said, Monique, Tyler Perry does not want to revisit this. Mm. Okay, fine. Right. While we're on the phone, Tyler Perry calls her back and says, I will meet with Monique, but not with her husband. Now, you ready for this? Yeah. And then Monique has to apologize. Jesus. Publicly. Jesus Christ. To say, Oprah and I had nothing to do with messing up her career. But that'd be a lie. 
I'm exactly. looking the goddamn camera. <laughs> I, thought you, I thought that was a stage the way you look in the camera. Yes. Because you heard it. Yes. Right? Yes. So when you have, when you hear what this man is saying, so I said, Stephanie, tell Tyler Perry, never will I meet with him without my husband. And I owe no apology, so I'm not going to give one. You know what? Um, thank you. Very astute observation there by Screw. It's almost like everyone that offers to help regrets it. But you know what it is, mostly, what I'm getting a feeling of? I'm getting the feeling like Monique didn't realise until later on the people that she thought were her friends were actually the ones that were conspiring to end her career. I think that's what she's real. But now she's trying to unwind all of that. But in real time, it's not working because the people who she's going against are way more powerful, way more richer, well more, way more well liked than her. Because it's a game of popularity of like, right? Because if she was well more, if she was way more well liked, or if she was way more likable, then she wouldn't have these issues. So that's kind of like what you're kind of seeing there. But like I said before, Monique could be a liar. Monique could be a bitch. Monique could be a pain in the ass. Monique could be difficult. Monique could be all the archetypes of a difficult black woman. Say all those things are true. But at the heart of this story, at the heart of this story is people in the industry pretending like they're all black empowerment, pretending like they're for the people, pretending like they're about uplifting voices, pretending they're about platforming and giving a light to fucking black women and black women are the most unrepresented, unloved people in the world, blah, blah, blah. All this amazing rhetoric, right? All this great fucking soapbox talk, all this great shit that looks good on some quotes on the shade borough or fucking shade room. But when it comes to actually helping, they don't help. <laughs> they say a lot of shit but they don't help especially if you're somebody with a name yourself if you're like a lonely person from the slums and you have nothing of course they'll pluck you up from the bottom and bring you up to the top kind of because it helps their image it makes them look good if they get some unknown person and give them a platform but if you're already famous if you already have a name, if you already have a reputation, if you already have a following, a bit of clout, uh, uh, you know, whatever around you, it's a bit more difficult for them to offer help because they're afraid you might take their spot. Because they're afraid it might put up a position, other things they've got working into jeopardy. That's the main thing you get seen there. It's honestly the main thing. But at the heart of it as well, like some of you guys have mentioned here, I've seen some conversation here. Let me quickly scroll up, actually. Uh, big up everybody who's fucking um, giving me loads of great insights here. Uh, big up Coiler saying, I know a lot of people from design school that are having mental breakdowns because they never figured out the knowledge that AZ is dropping at their career flopped. Exactly. But the knowledge I'm dropping is a realization. And I think people need to realize it. I'm in my position now. I'm having to kind of work back. I'm having to work really hard and on a really steep incline because of all the dumb decisions that I made early on in my career. Everything, every reason why I'm here now currently is my fault, no one else's. It's all my fault because I have the knowledge, I have the experience, I have everything that's needed to have those kind of roles, but I don't have them, why? Not because someone's been conspiring against me, not because they work, some other forces are working to hold me down, not because of all that shit, it's because of myself. It's because of the time when it was important to cultivate relationships, to network. I was too busy trying to be cool. I was too busy, like, in my own space. I was too busy thinking I was at bee's knees when I really wasn't anything. And I was also kind of looking down on people who were doing that networking, being nice to people type of thing. And I obviously didn't do it. And now I'm paying the price. That's the realization you need to make. And people don't really make that. They don't acknowledge the things that they've done to get themselves in the situation that they're in. They don't realize it because there are some situations that you're in, especially me growing up in a shitty place. I'm in now I'm in one of the, I mean, I live in one of the worst boroughs in London, maybe one of the worst boroughs in the UK. We have one of the highest rates of unemployment, high crime, like loads of fucking teenage pregnancies, um, gun crime, knife crime, everything, right? People die here every fucking minute. It happens all the time. So there are some occasions where my environment where my circumstances, where the people around me can negatively impact where I am at life. Those do, those do exist, but it's not all the time. It's not all the time the system, the government trying to hold you down. Sometimes it's just you being a fucking dickhead. Sometimes it's just you being too proud. Sometimes it's just you being too egotistical. Sometimes it's just you thinking you're too, you're much bigger than what you actually are. All those things can kind of play into it and then it can kind of conspire. And obviously sometimes you don't see the effects of it until later. You're like, shit, I probably should have said what I said at that time. You know, it's all those things there. Um, 
Big up case of Moses. Very true. I've been too cool for school when it comes to networking. Big regrets. Exactly. Um, and again, the good thing about regrets is that you can change. It's a, you know, you can have a regret and then you can learn, okay, I'm not going to, I'm not, I don't want to feel like that again. And you can change that behavior for the future. So even though you regret it now, now going forward, you'll be like, okay, cool. I'm going to make sure that I'm not like that when I was in the past. Um, Connor again said, I met a producer who got his gig because he checked crew in at a hotel and great his job. Exactly. Ig fucking exactly. That's all it takes. Honestly. Uh, but then if I was, if that was me and I was that person working in the crew thing, I would have been like too cool for school. I would have been actually like, oh yeah, like, you know, these guys are not like us. We're the real people. We have the real knowledge. No one knows what the crew doesn't know. I would, I would have been all on my, you know, my fucking, my snotty nose thing, right? My, my, my chin up and my nose up in the air. But really doing a good job and being a pleasure to be around in that kind of environment, who knows what it could lead to. But I was too fucking caught up in my own head. Absolutely stupid. Really, really fucking stupid. Um, <laughs> Tyler, he never doing a thing. Uh... Exactly, exactly, um, Joe Mixon, Joe Mibson. No victimhood here, boy. Move along. Exactly, exactly. Ick, fucking exactly. I do understand that and I do believe that. So big up uh, Monique anyway. Like I said, I think Monique is a far better person to actually believe in these stories because she's so unlikable, because she has so many holes in her story, because she seems to always be the one that you know, gets fucking dealt a bad hand. I think she's also someone that's more believable because... She's obviously proof that these people in the industry, they like to talk like they get along gang, but they're not really get along gang. They don't really want to help you. They act like they want to help you, but they don't really want to help you because they know if they do help you, it could fuck up some of their deals going forward. So I love that Monique is sharing that. I love that she's being open about it and hopefully we'll see some change going forward. <laughs> 